Hey everybody, Do really here. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Bar Commons. I have no clue how much time we have left on Natsuiko was a route here, but uh, we're in chapter 6 right now. We crash landed somewhere and Natsuiko was gravely injured and seems to have lost his memory, though I'm not sure if he really did or not. Or if he did, I think he probably gained it back at some point or will gain it back at some point, but pretend to have amnesia so he could spend more time with Mikoto. <laughs> Well, that's my theory anyway. But let's see what really happens. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. In fact, I did all I could to keep myself from having much close contact with Natsuiko at all. But I am the only one he has to take care of him, so some contact is unavoidable. The young village girls were nearly tripping over themselves trying to help him. In their eyes, he was apparently a desirable man. Not in your eyes? Come on, Mikoto, don't fool yourself. They did not know he was both a dangerous criminal and a traitor in the eyes of the world. Memories or not, that would not change. It would be terrible to have these nice people end up interrogated for aiding and abetting a felon. Exactly. This is simply a duty I must keep. This is not something I want to do. Of course, Considering how jealous the village girls seemed to be of me already, telling them that we were not wed was not a great idea. Not only that, we were allowed to stay here purely on the villagers' good graces. We had no way to pay for the medical care or housing. They were already so generous, I could not possibly bother them with selfish requests like a bigger house or an extra bed. I told them that he and I are distant cousins, and that seems to have satisfied them for now, but I cannot afford to get too confident. Oh, you should have just said you were married. And that would keep the girls at bay. Maybe. According to the doctor, Natsuiko's head injury was minor. His memory loss should be temporary. I was to concentrate on caring for his other injuries and let him handle his memory issue at his own pace. Those were the doctor's orders. Not that I could do all that much to help him with his memory anyway. I hardly know anything about him. I was given a nice assortment of veggies today. The town matron even showed me how to best cook them. I am going to get started on it now. Let me help. No, thank you. You need to rest. It will be a while before you fully heal, you know. As far as I could tell, Natsuiko did not really seem particularly bothered by his memory loss. He remembered how to take care of himself and do basic things. For anything else, he asked me. He never asked about his past, I did not particularly want to be asked about it either, so I did not bring up the subject. Perhaps Natsuiko noticed my reluctance to speak about it. He never tried to ask me. Okay, I will do my best deal quickly, so that I can help you without making you worry. Look at that smile, it's so beautiful! You healing completely will just bring a different set of complicated problems. So his name's Natsuiko? Oh, that's such a strong-sounding name! Are you two really not married? If that's the case, could you please introduce me to him? Hey, no fair! I get to be introduced first! Mikoto, what's wrong? You look thoroughly exhausted. N no I am fine! He is the sort of man who attracts attention from women. Now that I think about it, he was conscious before I was when we first arrived here. I heard several of the village girls wanted to be his caretaker. Hmm. I have to stare at him silently. <laughs> That's not going to be a little creepy. I have never really taken a proper look at any man besides Sakuya. I hardly ever spoke with the men on the ship either. You're creeping him out, Mikoto. I guess I may have a tendency to compare them all to Sakuya. Well, he likes it. Is that an invitation? <laughs> oh my god, okay. I, I'm gonna rewind that so you guys can hear that line again. <laughs> so cute. How can she not give in to that? An invitation? To what? Oh, come on. Look how sad you made him. Nothing happened while I was gone for the day, did it? No. I was bored stiff as always. 
True, and there is not even a single book here to read. I guess all there is to do is nap. Thanks to the painkillers I take each night, I get more than enough of that already. I don't need any midday nap time. I generally kill time by playing shogi. Shogi? Well, that is an ancient game. But how? We do not have a shogi board or any of the pieces here. I just play in my head. It isn't that unusual. It's basically like blindfolded shogi, which is something advanced players do anyway. Really? I'm afraid I have never heard of anything like that. It's actually rather interesting once you try it. I could show you how if you'd like. Man, that would be way too much for me to keep that, that board set up in your head. I could never do that. I, like, could you imagine keeping a chess board in your mind and like playing an entire game of chess just in your head? No, I could never do it. I doubt I could keep up with him. Other than that, I look out the window and enjoy the scenery. I saw some cumulus clouds today. It was a nice summer sky, really. Yes, though it is fairly cool for summer here. I feel like there is something important that was going to happen in the summertime. Something that I have been waiting for for a long time. I feel so close to remembering what it was, but I also have a feeling of dread. Like when I gain that memory, I lose everything else. What do you mean? I'm not really sure myself, but for some reason, whenever I get melancholy sitting here alone, I hear your voice. Mine? Yeah, you tripped today, right? What? I had tripped. Quite spectacularly, in fact. I was helping in the field behind the house. I am sure it must have been a ridiculous sight. The villagers had a hearty laugh at my expense. I could hear you yelp all the way from here. I was halfway to the door to help you out when I heard the villagers all start to laugh. So I figured that you must not have been in too much trouble. I had no idea I could be heard all the way up here. I can hear you pretty much everywhere in the village, though that's probably because I'm listening for you. I like hearing your voice. Oh, he just melts me. Why? There is not anything unique or special about my voice. It is just normal. Oh, it sounds special to me. It's brighter and clearer than everyone else's. To me, it's like a fresh summer breeze. I almost want to hold my hand out to touch it. Reflexively, I spun away from him. Hearing that much praise from him made it almost impossible for me not to blush bright red. Natsuiko was not the type to use honeyed words and empty flattery. He never would have said any of that if he still had his memories. Th that is enough teasing, thank you. I will not fall for that kind of flattery. Teasing? I meant every word I just said. It did not sound like he was lying either. His tone of voice had not changed one bit from when he was talking about Shogi earlier. You are not the sort of person who would say things like that. It is not at all like you to pay me a compliment. I didn't realize it would bother you that much. I'm sorry. You need not apologize for it. Apparently, the old me was the type not to ever speak his mind. N no you simply did not have that kind of interest in me at all. You never said those kind of things because you never thought them. I had no interest in you. You must be joking. I want to learn more about you. Actually, you could say that I want that more than I want to learn about my old self. You work day and night. You never act tired. No matter how you shout and talk all day, your voice never grows hoarse. One minute you seem to be happy, but at the next you are irked. Your mood changes faster than mountain weather. Is that all you wanted to say? There, see? I thought you were blushing earlier, but now you're already in a sour mood. And it is your fault, too! <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. Odd. It is as if his personality has changed completely. Before he was so grim, it seemed like the furrows between his brows were permanent. There are other things I wonder about you. When you go to sleep. Aww. Hmm. I sleep at night. Every night, even. But you are still awake when I go to sleep, and already up when I wake up. There is only one bed in this house. 
So he never wakes up in the middle of the night? Where do you sleep at night? I just go out to see the night scenery. You're just gonna pretend that you don't sleep at all? The night scenery? Is there anything special about the scenery in the village at night? Yes, the fields and the gardens. As soon as the words left my mouth, I realized that neither of those were visible at night. Feeling awkward, I snapped my mouth shut. Uh, anyway, once I am ready, I come back and go to sleep. Does that satisfy your curiosity? I think my painkillers are a bit too strong. They put me out so fast I can't see you sleep. Why would you need to see that? Furthermore, I do not want you to see that. Why not? Th that is quite enough of this. I had dinner to make, so just you go lie down and play shogi by yourself until I am done. I hurriedly brought the conversation to an awkward close and went to the kitchen. I am not going to be able to tolerate this life here very long, am I? It is decidedly bad for my heart. Why does the inside of this house look so much nicer than the thatched grass huts outside? Miss, I bought some veggies for you. Oh, thank you. Here you go. Goodness, this many? I could not possibly take more than what I earned. Nah, don't worry about it. Take them. I'm sure the veggies are happy to be eaten by a pretty lady like you anyway. Oh, by the way, I heard some of the girls saying that you and that young man in there aren't married. M married Of course not! Why would we be... Now the village men are bringing that up? I already said that Natsuiko and I are cousins. Saying we were brother and sister would be too easy to see through, so I chose cousins instead. Apparently they are not falling for that. Oh goodness, are there rumors about us now? Really, that's good to hear. Say, how about you come over to my place tonight? Yikes! There was a loud bang behind me. Turning around, I saw Natsuiko standing there with an angry look on his face. If a man and woman are living together, what else would they be? Oh, oh, uh, right. Got a point there. <laughs> so y'all are married then. Got it. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, anyways, uh, look at the time. See ya. Why on earth did you say something like that? Now he has the wrong idea about us. How oh, is that the wrong idea? And now he thinks we are m m married, but we are not. Natsuiko stormed outside without saying a word. Something must have soured his mood. You? He did not have to say anything. I had spent enough time with him now that I could tell. He is even more tight-lipped than usual when he gets like this. Why would he be so upset to hear me say that we are not married? I simply have no idea, but I shall wait until his mood improves before I ask about it. However, his mood did not improve for some time after that incident. At first, I thought he was annoyed, but then I noticed him acting a bit differently. He did not seem angry so much as it seemed that he was deep in thought about something. Uh-oh. He getting his memory back? One of the neighbors has offered to teach me a new recipe. I will be home a little later than usual this evening. And that's so go. Mm-hmm. One. Lost in thought again. Perhaps he is trying to get his memory back. Natsuiko's injuries were healing well. It did not seem like he was in any pain. If he was this far along his recovery, it would not be a shock if his memories returned. The doctor said his memory loss should be temporary, so it may be reversed at any time now. If he does, will we return to being enemies with each other? But if his memories are truly lost, would we be able to stay here together forever? Thinking on memories and their loss, I was reminded of Kohoru. When we first met, she had forgotten her own name, but when she finally remembered it, she was so happy she was bouncing when she told me. To completely forget, and that would be a very sad, very painful thing indeed. Regaining his memories is obviously the best thing for Natsuiko, but... It's late, you should go to bed, go on. 
why isn't he going? I'm going outside. At this hour? What on earth for? Going out to look at the stars? Are you going out to look at the stars? How did you know? How could I not know? Come on, I will accompany you. It has been some time since I last did this. My spirit immediately felt lighter than it had in days, if not weeks. This may have been Natsuko's idea, but my gait seemed to be far lighter and more eager. We went to the nearby forest. In the high, clear mountain air, the stars shone like beautiful diamonds. How lovely! Yeah. Oh, that is the constellation Virgo, correct? Where? I pointed up at the sky. Natsuiko leaned in to better see what I was pointing at, and our shoulders touched. Um, uh, th that white star there. Oh, uh, I see it. Do you remember anything? No, why? You used to like watching stars a lot. You decided to do this so suddenly, I thought something must have come back to you. No. For some reason, I just felt like doing this. He has not remembered anything, yet he still wanted to come see the stars. That may just be how memories are. When I was young, I forgot the name of one of my favorite flowers. I had no idea what it was called, nor what it looked like, but the moment I smelled its scent, everything came flooding back to me. There may be part of our hearts that does not rely on memory alone to remember things. Not on memories alone, eh? I told him as much about the stars as I could. It felt odd, taking everything he had taught me and turning around and teaching it back to him. I think knowledge like that, usually when you have amnesia, you keep knowledge like that, don't you? Like technical skills and book learning and stuff, you just don't remember sequences of events in your life. Do you know much about the stars? No, everything I know you taught to me. So, you remember what I told you then? How could I possibly forget? You dragged me out every night and kept repeating it to me. Ah. Uh. Why are you smiling? Nothing. I was just thinking how happy I must have been to know you were listening to everything I said so intently. It feels like such a waste that I've forgotten all of that now. Er, I was not listening that intently. I just am blessed with a very good memory. I quickly turned to look up at the sky, hoping to hide my sudden embarrassment. Oh, I never did talk with him about that legend that says those two stars are married. It had been in the book on stars he lent me. I remember thinking it was so fascinating that I went running to see him about it. It was Arcturus, right? Let me make sure. Yep, Arcturus. And Spica. I think those were it. Uh, there is a legend that says that orange star there, Arcturus, is married to that white one over there, Spica. Married, hmm? Both are very far apart. But the husband star, Arcturus, is even now racing closer to his wife, Spica. It is... what was it called again? Proper motion? In a billion or so years from now, those two will be really close together, like a couple. I told the story to Natsuiko, searching through my mind for the terms that had been in the book. He watched me the whole time, never looking away. Don't you think that is a lovely story? Yeah. I was finally able to share that with him. I was very happy about that. Shared knowledge, I had never had any experience like that with anyone else. I had an education, of course, but that was on standard school topics, nothing more. I studied the books they gave me so I could answer the questions on the tests they gave me. But this is different. Now I know how fun and how fascinating it can be to learn. It was Natsuiko who taught that to me. If I had never met him, I do not think I would have ever discovered this. Because it was enough to make that dour-faced man small with joy, I felt compelled to learn. Somewhere along the way, I got swept up in the subject, too. My, it has gotten awfully late. 
no matter how much he has recuperated, it still is not good for him to be out this long. You must be chilled through by now. You could take a quick bath to warm back up if you want. Do try to sleep soon, though. And Natsuiko? I think he'd rather you warm him up. He stood there, still as a stone, making no attempt to move at all. I thought he might be lost in thought again, but that was not the case. He was looking straight at me. Tell me something. What was I to you? Well, why bring this up all of a sudden? It isn't sudden. I've been thinking about this for a long time. What is he to me? The enemy? That word popped into my mind and disappeared. The Natsuiko standing before me had no memories. This one would not try to kill the other espers. I could not call him my enemy any more. Besides, I cannot kill him either. We should talk about this some other time. This will do nothing to speed your recovery. Then tell me what you were to me. Please, Mikoto. I was a tool to you. Nothing more. You only ever thought of how best to make use of me. You ordered me around and even threatened the lives of my friends if I did not obey you. I hated you too, so we were even, really. Each word I said stabbed me in the heart. It was the truth, though. All of it except one thing. So, then why are you here? Huh? Why stay to feed me and look after a man that you hated? You should have just abandoned me and embraced your freedom. What? I could never do anything like that. Honestly, even I have no idea why I'm still here. I had only obeyed him to protect the others. He was also fighting for a just cause. I had not tried to kill him since we ended up here because he did not have his memories. But that does not explain why I am still here living with him. Why not go back to the others? Why did you save my life that day? It was my fault we were in that situation. It was my fault that you were hurt. Why? I'm sorry. You do not have any memory of what happened. I should not have asked that. I knew I would never put myself in harm's way to save someone I thought of only as a tool. You... you only say that now because you have no memories of the time. Once you get them back, you might quickly change your mind. Memories are not. I am still the one who knows myself best. I felt my heart begin to quicken. I saved you because you were important to me. Do you disbelieve me because I don't have all my memories? Tell me, what is the difference between me now and the old me? There is nothing. When I first awoke with no memories, you named me Natsuiko Azuma. I am Natsuiko Azuma. The love I have for you proves that beyond doubt. The moment he said that, my mind went blank. For some reason, a tear slid down my cheek. Strangely, it was only after that tear had fallen that my emotions caught up. Joy, surprise, confusion. They welled up inside me in such abundance that I felt like I was drowning. More tears came. I felt like hearing you call my name. It makes me feel happy. This isn't a recent thing either. It has been like that since we first spoke. Like you said, the old me may have forced you into doing terrible things. But I will never do anything to hurt you again. You can believe me when I say that. I... I love you. That night, Natsuko threw away the painkillers he had been taking. With every layer of clothing we shed, I felt his warmth grow ever hotter. His breath was in my ear. Tickled, I tried to squirm away. But his strong arms would not let me escape. Wow. You may have been right when you said a heart doesn't rely on memories alone. Mikoto, I can feel how much I care for you every time I speak your name. His deep, sensual voice rumbled in my ear, 
Shivers ran down my spine and all the way out to my fingertips. Even if I had wanted to escape, there was nowhere for me to run to. He had me in his arms, and he wasn't letting go. You worry about everyone else before yourself. You pretend to be strong while being soft at heart. I wanted to protect that. Oh, they need to move this picture up in the frame a little. My memories may be gone, but what I know of you now will never disappear. I love you. Stay with me forever. I wanted to say I loved him back, but his lips sealed mine, and I could not speak the words. So I told him with my actions, wrapping my arms around him in an embrace. I held him tight, putting all my love into it. Arcturus and Spica, they still grew closer and closer, though it would take billions of years for them to meet. As for Natsuiko and I, I felt like we had finally come together. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Natsuiko? Awake? What are you doing? Sounds like he's making breakfast. Making breakfast. He's cooking. What on earth brought about this sudden change? Peeking around him at the stove, I saw a little pot bubbling merrily away. Egg and rice porridge. Yeah, I pushed you a bit too hard last night. So I thought I would make something easy for you to digest this morning. <laughs> Well, it's not like anything he did to her could have made her feel sick, really. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I envy you, Mikoto. Huh? When did you... Oh! Why did you go and say it like that? It looks like it is finished to me. No, not yet. It still isn't hot enough. Well, it has to be scalding hot for her. No, are you sure? The pot looked pretty close to bubbling over. I would not have been surprised if the porridge was starting to burn at the bottom. Does he like his porridge that hot? She really forgets that she said that. Thinking about it, he served me some porridge that was as hot as lava that one time. When was it again? I am, I am. Stop rushing me. Cold porridge is so disgusting, it is hard to force it down. Disgusting. Er, I, I did not mean disgusting in a... that way. It is... er... I just prefer my porridge to be piping hot. Hot enough to scald my tongue. Oh yeah, I seem to remember saying something like that before. Is that why he is making the porridge so hot? Well, I'm supposed to say, you are so kind. It was hard to understand as a kindness at first, but I cannot say I dislike it. In fact, I think I kind of enjoy it. You can be awfully kind when you decide to be. What is this all about? It was just a thought I had, nothing more. Yes, I am. I made particularly certain to be very kind and gentle last night. <laughs> You're just trying to make her blush. It wouldn't be right to make you cry, now would it? So I held back. Are you implying that won't be necessary next time? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. No, no. What? The porridge will be done soon. Go sit down. Okay, we're ending this episode there. Whoo! <laughs> Some loaded statement there. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm so, so jealous. Oh. Alright, I'm sorry for being a pervy old lady here. <laughs> okay, I hope to see you in my future videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.